Boom, there we go, cool. Okay, so talking about markers, real quick, it's a really good idea to have markers everywhere you can. So I'm gonna put, let's see. Yeah, we're gonna put a marker right here in the beginning and call this on top. The way you put a marker in is you hit the enter key if you have a numeric keypad or you hit uh, F in and return if you are on a laptop. Okay, that's a good place for our verse one. Wanna feel your word. Embrace me. Like... And we're gonna go over here. I wanna see your eyes. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep that like that. This is a good place for chorus number one. And go back over here to the end of chorus number one. Cool. Verse two. All right, go over here. Great chorus two, and you can see I'm not really getting super, uh, you know, picky about if it's directly on the downbeat or not. It's just got to be near it, and actually, realistically. You don't really need it to be on the down, but you want to have a little bit of space there for people to kind of get ready for it and maybe turn your pre-roll on. Okay, this is our bridge. And then there's like a little guitar solo thing here at the end. Oops. Hold on, if I move, if I put a, I just put one in kind of in the wrong place here. So I can just click and drag it around. And if you have your grid turned on, it'll lock to the grid. If you don't have your grid turned on, it'll just put it wherever you hit the enter key. And I'm just gonna do this. We're gonna call this one a guitar solo, boop. And it's also the outro slash outro. And then we're gonna go here to the end. Okay, and whoops, and we're gonna put, we're gonna call this one uh, uh, end, because it is the end. I'm gonna move over here so it's actually at the end. And we can see, there's actually a few things going on. I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in on this. Symbol is like there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight all this stuff here like this. And let's hold down all these. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, so, oops. And we're like, oh hell. This. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a fade in here. What is it? Command F, fade out. And they're all just gonna have fades. So I go in here. Great, cool. And we could even make some of these like, you know, like this, a little bit shorter here. You, If you wanted to, you could cut these first. Hit delete or hit cut up afterwards. And we got that. So let's just listen to that real quick. Awesome, so we got that little fade out ending there. Now, here's the cool thing is if you put these in kind of in the beginning of stuff when you're kind of messing around from the beginning, if you put all your markers in here really early on, I can pull up my markers window with command numeric key five. And now when it's time to bounce out, all I do is I just click on the top one here that says top and I hold down shift and click the last one and it highlights everything I wanna bounce and I just hit go and it will automatically It'll automatically bounce for me. And that's really what you want to do because you're going to be bouncing these things out quite a bit over time as you're getting your mixes together and you're learning how to do this stuff, especially in the beginning when you're first learning how your room sounds and you're kind of getting your head wrapped around all these t techniques that I'm showing you. You're really going to have uh, a hard time. Like you're going you're to have to bounce it more than once. You can't just bounce it once and be like, oh, that's amazing. Yes, that's done. No, you're going to bounce it a bunch of times because you're going to go listen to it in different places. Take it to a club, take it to a car, take it to, you know, take it for a walk, walk your dog, listen to it. And when you're doing that, you don't have to like try to find the end every single time. So that's with the markers there. And now also I can just go ahead and go to any kind of different part of the song. And I can just go to any part of the song that I want to, and that's a really great way to work with that there. And it just talks about some of that stuff in here. Markers, FN return adds a marker. Enter on the numeric keypad adds a marker. Uh, make sure you have top and end. Uh, top is for starting your bounce, end is for ending the bounce. When you're ready to bounce the audio, open the memory locations window, click top, hold shift, click end, and this will be the area of the timeline that you bounce out.
All right, so let's start with talking about bounce. Actually, no. Let's start with talking about, uh, yeah, freeze and commit. These are, these are a little bit better to start with because bounce comes a little bit later. So I've just spent a bunch of time putting vocals, making my vocals sound really pretty. And we can see here my verse one, verse two, uh, the verse uh, vocals, um, one verse vocals two, all that stuff. I got these three here and they all sound really good. They all have the same exact uh, setting on them. But what I want to do is let's say I'm sending this out to somebody or if I just want to save it and I'm not sure I'm going to have these plugins in the future. Or if I'm working in a studio, I'm not sure I'm going to have these plugins. Here's what we want to do. We want to go ahead and commit this track. There's, there's two options. We got commit, and we got freeze. Freeze is I think better for MIDI. If you're working with MIDI stuff and you want to keep the keep it there and be able to unfreeze it and refreeze it, that's better for that. Uh, commit is what I use almost all the time. I almost never use freeze. Commit just turns it into audio right there, but it does a little something something extra for you. So I'm going to right click on this track, and I'm going to go down here in the bottom, and it says freeze, commit, or bounce. And now the two I'm looking at here is freeze and commit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use commit, and now it pops up a little window that says, hey, okay, you wanna commit this track, that's great. What do you wanna render? What do you wanna turn into audio? Well, I can turn in, if I have any kind of volume or uh, mute automation stuff in here, like we talked about before, automation. If I have volume and mute automation, do I wanna put that into the track? Usually, no. Usually, you don't want you wanna save that for just automation. Same thing with panning. Do I want to do any kind of panning stuff in the track? The answer is usually no. Don't worry about panning stuff. Leave that as automation. Now, copy the sends in the group assignments. This is your outputs and your sends. Yes, usually you do want to copy those, so keep those checked. Consolidate clips. That's just going to take any clips and just make them into one big long clip. You can check that box or not. I'm going to uncheck it at this point. And then Insert after last selected track. That's going to put it after our last selected track. Yes, that's good. And this one here is important, source tracks. What do we want to do with the original tracks that were in there? Well, in this case, let's go ahead and hide and make them inactive. It's going to hide them. It's going to turn them off. So they're still there. I can get to them if I want to, and I can turn them back on, and I can tweak the changes, and I can you know, bounce them again or com commit them again. Um, but they're hidden. This hide and make inactive is the one that I recommend using the most. Make inactive, what it does is it just turns it off, but it leaves it there. Delete is going to delete the track off your out of your session, so you can't go back to it. Do not use delete. And then do nothing, doesn't do anything, it doesn't mute it, it doesn't hide it, it doesn't make it inactive, it doesn't delete it, nothing. So my, the one I recommend is hide and make inactive. Make sure you check the box for offline. You do not want to do this online, it'll take too long. So I'm going to go hit, hit OK, and now it's going to go ahead and render it. And you see what it just did? It just made a new track with the same name, but .cm, and all of those plugins are off the track. Now, here's the thing, is if I go over here into my vocal part here, it just kind of gave me a new vocal part here what I rendered down if I want to go back and make changes to my effects that I did what I can do is I can open up my window here and you see it says verse vox one I could go ahead and turn that back on Boop. and I can uh, so make sure we I, sorry I just made it so we see it I just unhit it and now I can turn it back on I just right click on it and I go make active there's make active right down there Make it active, and now it pulls it back so I can use it again. If I want to hide it and make it inactive again, I can just go hide and make it active by right-clicking. Boom, and there we go. So now, it should sound. Whoops, let's go back to the beginning here. It sounds exactly the same as it did before. Now. The cool thing about this is that this is now audio that I can edit and do all sorts of stuff with in my session. So if I wanted to go and do some really creative things with this, like flipping things backwards or adding effects to stuff or chopping it up or doing whatever, I can do that now, uh, which is something you cannot do with freeze. Let's go ahead and freeze this one. Let's see what it looks like. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go down to freeze. And it just automatically does it for me. Boom, boom, boom. I don't have to think about nothing. I don't have to do anything. 
And now everything is still here on this on the track. And if we look at this down here, everything is still here. It's just kind of grayed out. If I try to move it, it's gonna does it give me a warning? Oh, it doesn't give me a warning anymore. Okay. I think it's I think it gives you a warning the first time you do it. Um, and we can't move it. We can't do anything with it. I don't know if you can how well you can see that. It's like there we go. See that? Like it's just grayed out. I can't move it. I can't do nothing. I can't over here. I can't move these around. Like it won't let me do anything. It says it's frozen. It says plugin, plugin frozen. Okay. So what that means is basically now this has been put into my audio files folder. I think it's. I, I'm not actually sure where it ends up living. Let's see. Where does it put it? Rendered files. Here we go. Uh, yes. Yep. Here we go. Boom. FZ freeze. Okay. So this has been frozen here. Uh, so it ends up in here, but it's not in my audio files folder. It's in this rendered files folder here. So we don't want to, um, you know, you don't want to delete those for sure. That'll mess everything up. But honestly, I don't, I don't love doing this because I can't do, like, if I want to move things around, I can't, I can't do anything with it. So I actually don't love doing that. I'm going to go ahead and unfreeze it. When you unfreeze it, it gets rid of the audio. I'm going to guess it was in here. Oh no, it's still there. Okay, well that's an interesting, huh, that's interesting. What I like to do is I like to actually just turn these into, I like to go to commit for all these and just hit okay. Once you've set it up once, it's gonna go ahead and set it up, it's gonna do it every time the same way. And now we've got our tracks. And, and now I can actually go in here and move these around if I wanted to. They're actually audio tracks, which I actually prefer over what we were just using here. Wanna feel your word, embrace me, like skin across your bone. So all the effects that were on there are no longer affecting my computer's CPU. I can still hear all the effects that were on there. It's, it's great. I can send it to somebody and they can open it up. They're going to hear exactly what I'm hearing. So if you are using Pro Tools and you're working with somebody else, you definitely want to um, have it set up so uh, you're, um, uh, so, so you, all, you definitely want to do this before you send it over to them just in case they don't have the same plugins. If you know you have all the same plugins as your friend, then whatever, you don't need to do this. But uh, usually it's a pretty good idea to kind of save it and, and uh, have it like this. All right, cool. Let's just see. All right, I'm gonna move this a little bit here. No, 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 I don't, Never mind. My computer's like a little bit crooked. It's kind of making me, it's like triggering my OCD here, but whatever. Ooh, I've got 35 people watching right now. Is it because I have a beautiful background? People come in, they're like, oh my gosh, this guy's got a beautiful background. Let me see what he's saying. Uh, or is it just my face? Or is it because you know I have a dog in my lap? Which one is it? All right. So uh, that's freeze and commit. Those are great. Let me, um, let's go ahead and talk about bounce. Now bounce is what you need to do whenever you're ready to send this to a friend for like, uh, to listen to if you're going to take it and stick it in your iP uh, your iPhone or whatever so you can listen to it wherever you are. You need to bounce it. Bouncing it is basically making a, a stereo file out of your mix. So the first step for bouncing is you're going to open up your memory locations and just make sure you're bouncing the right part of the song. Uh, click on top, hold down shift, click end. And now if you want to listen to it, you can listen to it. Um, the next step is we're going to command option B for bounce mix. It's also up here under file bounce mix right here. Command option B is the shortcut. Memorize it because you're going to use it a lot. Now, uh, they have different presets in here. Now you can set up different presets and stuff. So for example, if I want to say this is my default. Do, 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 do here. Let's make this one my default. So I hold down command, I click it, and it's going to save it. If I wanted to make one where it saves it as a wave file, an AIF file, and uh, I can do that for number two, so I can go back and forth between one and two. And that's pretty cool. You can have these set up for different um, presets. So when you're bouncing out for film, or you're bouncing out for surround sound, or you're bouncing out for stereo, you can have it so you just click on the preset button and just and you're good to go. Um, location. Oh, yeah, let's just go from top to bottom. So file name, whatever it is, uh, Rubidoux Rough Mix. Here we go. File type, Wave. That's the most uh, um, usable one for everybody. Everybody can use waves, no problem. So I just use wave files. Uh, output, what do you want to bounce out? Stereo, usually, yep. 
Do you want to add an MP3? Do you want to turn it into an MP3 as well? Yes, you do, probably. File format, interleaved, great. Bit depth, 24-bit sample rate, 44.1. Pad to frame boundary. Usually, you're not going to have to worry about that, but if you're worried about, I don't know, maybe that's a film thing. I, I, I feel like that might be a film thing because it says frame. And then over here, what do we want to do with it after we after we bounce it out? Do we want to import it back in again? If you're doing uh, sampling and resampling stuff, then you click that box. If not, don't click the box. Where do we want to put it? Prompt for location or put it into the session folder. Just usually put it into the session folder. You don't really want to prompt for location ever. And it's going to put it right into your bounced files. If you want to put it into a separate lo location, you can do that. Offline, yes. Let me go ahead and add that to my preset there because that should... Let's do that for this one as well, boop. Okay, cool. So we're gonna make a WAV file that is 24-bit. Uh, sample rate is uh, 44.1, and we're gonna also make an MP3. File format. You have some options here, but not really. The only one you really wanna use ever is interleaved. If you are, again, creating samples for like bass lines or kick drums, some snare drums, stuff like that, maybe you, um, maybe you wanna make it mono or something like that. But come on, that was just me kicking the chair, baby. The dog just got really spooked because I just kicked the chair with my foot. Hi, baby. Okay. So now we're going to hit bounce. And the first thing it's going to do is going to tell us, hey, what kind of MP3 do you want to make? Make sure your encoding speed is set for highest quality. And then your constant bit rate is set for 320. And that's it. Like the title is whatever the artist is. I don't know who the artist is. The title is Tony G, Ruby Rough Mix. Um, album, if you want to name it, you can. If you want to give it a, a, a genre, you can. If it's like part of a, an album, with track number one, track number two, track number three, what, what year, great. Okay, now we're going to hit OK, and now it's going to do it. So it bounces it out. And you can see it's doing it really fast, which is great. The faster computer you've got, the faster it's going to do that part right there. Now we go look in our finder. Go to our bounced files, and we can see I've got a bunch of them in here, and this is the one I just did today. So now I can listen to this. If I if I listen to it, you're not going to be able to hear it. I don't think I've got it set up for that right now. But there we go. We've got a WAV file. We've got an MP3. The WAV file is uh, 70, about 70 megabytes, and the MP3 is about 10 megabytes. Now, um, I highly recommend bouncing out waves and MP3s and then uh, send the MP3 to a client. You can even send out like a slightly lower quality MP3 if you're worried about them kind of just jacking your work and going uh, and then give them the higher quality stuff later on. I personally don't really hear a big difference between MP3s at 320 kilobits per second or wave files. I know there is probably a difference and I know people, you know, they like to get all the, ah, it's a big difference, but I, I play big shows, DJing, uh, where I play back-to-back -back with my partner and he plays waves, I play MP3s, and never once has somebody come up to me and complained about the quality of the music that I'm playing. So uh, yeah, take that for what it's worth. All right, and I think we're good. Let's just go through the notes here real quick just to make sure. Um, option, command, uh, balance is command option B. This will make a stereo two-track version of your song. Wave is most compatible. Number two, if you need an MP3. You can see this looks a little bit different from what uh, we just looked at here on my screen. It's because this is a slightly older version of Pro Tools, but it's all basically the same stuff. Uh, number eight, offline always saves you time. If you're going to do MP3 recording, iTunes menu preferences general, import settings custom. Uh, oh, this is if you, if you want to do your MP3 later on. If you don't want to do the MP3 right now and you have iTunes, you can go into iTunes menu preferences general, import settings custom here let me show you where that is wait oh this computer doesn't have itunes anymore it's got apple music let's see what happens with apple music uh does it have the same stuff going on let's go to preferences and general files imports okay it's in a slightly different place with apple music but it's uh here uh I'll put that back up there uh, files, import settings, and then we want to use, if we're importing it in, mp3, do custom, 320, uh, sample rate, auto, channels, auto, stereo, joint stereo, smart encoding adjustments off, filter frequencies off, variable bit rate, no, and then hit OK, and then hit OK, and hit OK, and now when, I don't want Apple Music, no, 
get out of here. I hate you. Um, and then when I, if I were to convert songs to MP3s, it would use those settings. They're right in here. Uh, this says iTunes. Everything else is basically the same except for menu preferences, not general. It's under files. Cool. And this stuff here, we just talked about it. Um, freeze freezes the track without actually turning it into audio. You can unfreeze at any time to edit the data. It's good for instrument tracks. Commit converts the track to full audio right in the session. It also gives you the option of keeping the original track, which you should do. You can also commit up to a certain plugin in the effects chain. Bounce bounces track to disk for sending to other DAWs. And then all three of these are great for uh, relieving the CPU usage, usage of your computer as well as resampling. Um, I, my favorite one is commit. So, yep. All right. One last thing I want to show you here before we stop this is something we did talk about last weekend or last week, but I'm going to go ahead and pull these back up and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and activate this one. If I want to save this uh, setting here, track setting, I just go in here, I just right click on the name of the track and go to save track preset. And it's going to give me a name for it. I'm going to call this Ruby. Do I don't know how you spell it. How do you, oh, it's right there in front of me. Okay, there we go. Vocal. Where do I want to put it? Category. I'm going to put it into Tony presets. And we'll call this Ruby to pre vocal one. <clears throat> and then what kind of track data do we want to recall? Um, I don't want to recall any of that stuff. I want to recall this stuff here. Just the plugin assignments. That's all I want to do. I don't want to recall anything else. So I have this set up here with my presets and then hit OK and hit OK. And we're good to go. So now if I want to go through here and put like this bridge vocal here, I can right click and go to recall track preset, Tony presets, Rubidoux vocal one, boop. And it puts them all in there, which is awesome. And I think maybe, let's see. Can we do this with multiple ones at the same time? Uh, let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah, so what I did was I highlight them and I hold down Option and Shift and I right click it while it's held down, Option and Shift is held down, recall, 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 and now it puts them all in there. That's dope. Let's see what's happening with our system usage. Yeah, we're still not doing a whole lot here. Let's go to our chorus, see what happens. Dope. I gotta say, you know what? Here, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. We don't need to have this recorded.